In this episode, I'm going to show how you can take one single image and just using Lightroom, turn it from this into this. We're also going to take this and turn it into this and another one with this into this. Those are three separate techniques that are very similar in some regard, but they will be different. And this will allow you a variety of tools then that you can use to just use a single image to get a well evenly exposed exterior shot. Now, you know, from a prior video I did when I do high end stuff, I'll do exposure blending to get a result like this, where I've taken multiple different exposures and using different tools, I've blended that together. So I have a link to that particular tutorial down in the description for this video, but that's a more complex example for doing high-end stuff. For a lot of the majority of the MLS shoots that you would do for listing websites, the technique that I'm going to show in this tutorial will suffice. It will be fine. But it's important to also understand a couple of the basics about this so that you get the proper footage. First off, you do need to be using somewhat of a decent camera. Now, most cameras today are basically ISO invariant. I've got a tutorial of that also down in the description for this video. But basically all that means is that if you're shooting at a low enough ISO, like 100, 200, you can really do a lot to the image if you're shooting in RAW, or as I talk about in my real estate photography series, if you're doing exteriors using OEM software to convert those to TIFF. You'll actually get a better quality using TIFFs. That's what I'm going to show in this example, but this can be done with raw files straight out of your camera. You're going to get the same results because this ISO invariance allows you to have this broad range of adjustments. Now, there's something else that you have to be aware of. And the second most important thing is that you want to be able to expose for doing exteriors you want to expose for the sky. It needs to be the brightest portion. For instance, what we're going to do in the first example, we're going to be taking this particular image. And you can see here it's very shadowed. In normal circumstances, what I would do is I would take this and I would take a bracket of it and I would have then brighter exposures to then blend in. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to use this particular shot. But as you can see here, and this will be the most difficult example, the other two are actually fairly simple, but I wanted to cover first the hardest first. You can see all the uh, adjustments and tools that would be involved to give you flexibility in doing this. The first thing we wanted to do was be able to increase certain areas of this precisely with a certain amount of exposure. So I uh, shot this on a winter day, and so the brighter exposure for the building was two stops different. In this case, what I did for the, uh, the image that we're going to use is this was shot at ISO 200, F8, 1 640th of a second. Now, the brighter exposure was two stops different, so it was at 1 1 60th of a second, and that's this one here. And you might think to yourself, well, if this is already exposed very well for just about everything, why not adjust the sky? This is the uh, second most critical point of why we need to use that one that exposed for the sky. If we used just this exposure and we dropped our exposure, I'm going to do it over here and drop it by two, then you can see we have a different result. The sky is not nearly the same is what we would have out of our standard sky exposure. The reason for this is because of stuff that I talk about in my book, Mastering Color. If you have that, you're aware of it, where I talk about the different sliders and what they actually do to the image in editing software. And I've got a link to that also, by the way, down in the description for the video. But the important point here, the take home point, is that notice what this does to the histogram. By lowering the exposure by just a couple stops, I've got a histogram that moves basically all the way over to the left, almost everything. It's completely blank on the right. So this is different than what your camera would do. That's why it's best to take something in camera if you're going to be lowering the exposure. Don't do that in editing software. Use a lower exposure out of camera. So let me set that back to zero. And let's go over just to finish off this example before we get into the actual editing process. If I were to take this image, which we are going to edit, and I increased the exposure by two stops, you can see then that the building is less affected. And if you noticed what happened with the rest of the histogram up here, it's different. If I go back and forth from where it was before and then upping it to, you can see then there's a broader, more widespread histogram by increasing the exposure. So that makes it easy. Anyways, that is the basis for what we're going to do. Now let's get into the actual nitty gritty of how these are edited. 
So what we want to do here is it's going to be a little bit similar in some regards to the other two examples. Once again, this will be the most complicated example is that we want to retain the sky and then work on all the rest of this. So what we can do is we go up here to the masking tool. That's up here on the right. And clicking on that, you might recall this from older versions of Lightroom where it was only brush and gradients, but now we have a lot of other stuff that we can use here. What we're gonna do in this case is select the sky. AI is automatically applied, and you can see it's spinning up here in, in red. It's selected the sky. We don't want to edit the sky, so what you do is on the mask up here, there's three little dots, click on those, and then say invert mask. And now we're working with everything but the sky. Then what we can do, and we'll do it here in just a little bit, is we can use brushes to add and subtract from that mask. But first, let's do some of the adjustments. Let's take that up by those two stops that we wanted to do. Yours, it could be different depending on the time of year. So you can see that the, it's still not quite done. It did up everything except the sky, but the sky replacement in Adobe's uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and Camera Raw, there's a bit of an overlap in here. So anyways, we're gonna fix all that. This is just our starting point. So with this, what we want to do now is start subtracting some of the areas of that mask. So that's where you go up here and you say subtract, or you could do add if you needed to add some in. By doing either one of these, you have a selection of things you could do. It's all of the other adjustments that were available to you earlier. In this case, I recommend using just a brush. So you click on that, now you've got a brush and you've got these various uh, options over here of what to do with the brush. Now the size can be changed obviously up here. I like to use the right and left uh, bracket keys on the keyboard to increase and decrease, makes it very fast. I like to keep the feathering very high and that gives me those two concentric circles so that I get a nice blending with it. And then the flow, this is similar in some regards to using the flow in uh, Photoshop brushes, except that instead of using pressure, by the more you go back and forth. In this case, it's every time you click and drag. So anyways, you keep it down to a decent enough flow, and then the density, keep it to 100. That's how much of the brush overall would be applied. First thing is up here, it really missed some by these trees. So I'm just gonna take that brush size down and using that then subtract brush, I'm going around the building just to get some of that. And you can see because I've got it feathered, it's not bleeding too much onto the building. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna increase the size of that brush and get some of the bigger areas like up here, these trees, we'll just uh, subtract that once again. So it's allowing then the other colors to come through. I'm gonna go to an even bigger brush here with a ton of feathering and go in here on these trees. This is a nice way to do this instead of exposure blending in that you don't have to worry about the leaves moving and the, the, all that stuff that you'd have to have maybe some overlap, you know, if you were trying to blend two different exposures together. So you can see this is now starting to come through really nice. And all that we would do is keep going on this to these uh, bright areas where we would just subtract those. So you can get in really fine to some of the modeled light areas, like for instance here, and maybe just tap in a little bit, you could also lower the flow quite a bit so you do very fine adjustments as you're going across. Now you don't have to worry about you know undoing too much. You could just click some of that here, let's add that in, maybe increase that a little bit, make the brush a little bit smaller, you see getting that side of that fountain. So you can see now we've got something that looks very good. It was very simple to do. So once again, if we go back and take a look at the before and after, and I'm gonna do that by just hitting escape a couple times on my keyboard, and the masking window goes away. Now I can take a look at before and after over here and just take a look at the various views of before and after. You can see it's a big difference what we did. So we're gonna do one more thing before we start pixel peeping to really see did this have a negative effect on the image. What I'm gonna do is apply a standard preset. You can pause it here if you'd like to see what my standard exterior preset is. In this case, it pushed it just a little bit too far. I lowered the highlights too much, made it too contrasty. So we'll just take the highlights to right about there. Probably don't need as much shadow in there. But other than that, it looks pretty good. If we were to compare this to what I did when I did my manual exposure blending, you can see it's very similar. This one here was blended manually, and then this one here was done with this certain technique. Now there's more we could do here, obviously futzing around with clarity, 
maybe bringing up some of the shadows, cropping it like the other one was. But the important thing is this was just one image. Now, did it fail on any image quality? Well, let's go in here and take a look at 100%. Let's do some pixel peeping. And we'll go to the before and after view as well and see if there was really anything to be aware of. So you can see it was very dark over here in these areas. But when we go in here, we really don't see any noise. It's very clean. For instance, let's go to this clubhouse sign. You can see, yeah, it wasn't in the darkest of dark areas, so we wouldn't expect a lot of noise on an ISO invariant camera. And by the way, what camera was I using to do this that resulted in practically no noise in these shadows? It was just a Nikon Z5. That's all. I didn't have a Sony A1 or a Nikon Z9. I didn't have some expensive camera, a Z5, a body, about $1,000 right now. You know, it just wasn't that much. The thing is, it's because technology nowadays allows for this almost ISO invariance. Now, there is a small mistake here, and we can correct it, and this will happen. Let's go back here to where we have just our single view. And if you notice, there's a little bit of something up here where it's still a little dark. And that's for me subtracting from the mask. So we can zoom out here and take a look at that. You just go back to your masking tool and select that mask. Now it shows you that, well, here was your sky selection and here was your brush that you did your subtract. Either way, you can show the overlay by pressing this right here, this little thing, or you can also press O on your keyboard. Well, let's say that I wanted to add some of that back in there, some of the mask. You could futz around with that subtract brush, but I, quite honestly, this is going to be a throwaway thing shortly. So I'm just going to do an add. And I'm going to do an add brush. I'm going to use a very low flow. I'm going to keep it fairly small and then just go in here to add that in that section. And then that's all I'd need to do. If it's not doing it enough, increase your flow to get more of the effect coming through. And that's all you need to do. Hit escape a couple times, that window will go away. The idea here is that when you use a mask, you have a starting point. In this case, our starting point was using the sky. And then you can use add and subtract brushes to then subtract or add as you need to the effect that you're applying with the brush. And then with those brushes applied, any adjustments that you do with that are going to be outside of that mask. And that's why I was able to apply another one of my presets, had no effect on the exposure at all. It just produced this. When this one was finally done, it looked like this. Okay, let's go over to our second example. This example is a little bit different in that all we have is just a backlit house. So unlike the last example where all we were worried about was the sky, we really want to retain the sky up here and we also want to retain the ground down here, the driveway, the streets, some of the yard. And this is winter time, so there's a huge deep shadow here even shooting at noon. So anyways, this is very common with most real estate photography and this and the next example will be a lot simpler than that first. Similar to our last example, I had also done a manually blended one. And this was using two exposures, which consisted of this one for the house and this one, which we're gonna edit, which was for the sky and the ground. So similar to what we did before, we're gonna go up to our masking tool. Once again, this is only gonna use this photo. Now, instead of selecting the sky, what we're gonna do different here is select subject. This is an automatic thing when you click on it that you really don't have any control over. Lightroom's gonna to try to figure it out. It's different from what I showed in that prior video where I had done a lot of different selection and Photoshop gives you a lot more control over what kind of subject will be selected. But here, just, so, just click this select subject. It does its AI and you'll see that what it does, it will select the house and that's what's in red. Now, it also selected some of the neighbor's house. It's not perfect, but these are easy things to fix using our add and subtract brushes. So first things first though, now with that mask selected, let's up that exposure by two stops like we wanted. You can see uh, that's probably pretty bright. I mean, do we wanna go that high? Maybe about maybe 1.8 stops would be good. So there we go, we've got a pretty good looking uh, house. Now we need to just correct some of the other uh, exposure areas here that weren't caught by selecting the subject. To do that, what we're going to do is use an add brush. So up here, click on the add button, select brush, and I'll use a pretty good flow, pretty good size brush over here. And first things first, we'll just do this yard, make sure this is blended in. So there we go, eh, a little bit more over there on the yard. And 
that's fine. If I needed, if I subtr need to subtract that much, I could use subtract. So I could come over here and say, you know what? Yeah, we need to subtract from that mask just like that. Okay. So that's fine. So you can go back and forth on your add brushes and your subtract brushes. You can see there's two. This one here is my subtract brush that I had. So if I needed to, I could, you know, reuse that. This was my add brush. So I could add if I need to. So as you can go back and forth on these brushes as you see fit. Now, I also want to uh, add in this area over here on the garage. So I just brush that area in over there as well. And that's basically it. So now hit escape a couple times, we're out of there, and just apply the preset. And that's a little bit on the bright side. Once again, presets are just starting points. They are not the finished uh, image at all. So, and I'll just do on this case, I'll do a little bit of geometric uh, straightening here. There we go, that looks a lot better, I think. And then crop it down to where it should be. Now, when we compare this to the manually blended image, we can see that it's probably a little bit brighter. And that's just some of that's the post-processing. But a couple other things too that happen is that up here, I caught the gutter on this one, where on the one with manually blending, I didn't because I was using quick selection. Somehow I didn't. There's also some mistakes, once again, up here on the tree because of that uh, selection of the subject. Didn't quite get it. Well, that's easy enough. We go back to our mask, select that, and let's go to our subtract brush, which was this one here with the subtract next to it. We can select that brush and then we can just go here and just erase. Or you can make a whole new eraser brush. You can see I'm feathering in across also the top of the roof to make that look just a little bit more natural. You can blend that as you see fit. Anyways, when this was all edited, it looked like this. Okay, let's move on to our third example. Now, this one's different in that there's really no subject and there's, you know, sky, but the problem area that we have is this large area of shadows across the patio and up into the awning. So what we can do here is a slightly different technique. We're going to go to the masking tool once again, but instead of using select subject or select sky, we're going to use luminance range. So selecting that, you get this little dropper that you can select around the shadows. I found that to just be worthless for a lot of the exterior work. Instead, what I found to be easiest is up here on this slider for luminance range. You take this one little slider here, click on it, and drag it to the left. And you can see what's happening. The red is going away. If I move it to the left, it comes back because that's what's being masked. Now, what I like to do is take this to the point where I start seeing these shadows not being masked. So let's take it to that boundary. You can see there where it's turning black, that's the boundary. So let's move it back a little bit until that goes away. Okay, that's a good starting point. So now with that, let's do our two stops of exposure. And once again, two stops because this was really during the winter. So uh, during the summertime, it'd probably be about one stop difference. Now with that, if we like the look of that, eh, maybe we'll increase the shadows just a little bit too. And once again, this is applying just to that mask. But you can see what's happening is that the trees, the chairs, some of this luminance uh, masking, it was overlapping onto that because it's not just an area that it's selecting like a subject, it's doing it by luminance range. So what we wanna do here is use a subtract brush. So we just select subtract, we select brush, and we'll use a pretty good size flow and then a pretty good size brush. And first thing we'll do is we'll go around the sky here. You can see this is really cleaning it up. So that's looking good. It's not looking muddy there. Make it a little bit smaller to come around these chairs. We don't want those chairs, which are in the bright uh, sunlight, to look like they've been HDR, which is really what HDR would have done, right? HDR goes across every single pixel through out the image. And we don't want that. We just want certain areas adjusted. So that looks pretty good when we look at it from a distance, but let's zoom in real quick. Let's go over here to the chair. And you can see that there's already some rough edges. And we're gonna come back and visit that And once we enhance this with our preset. So let's apply that default preset that I use for exteriors. Let's adjust it to where it looks more natural, probably right about there, maybe a little bit more shadows. I like the look of that. Okay. Now that we go in and really see more of an impact, you see how jagged the edges are here. So this is where we might wanna fine tune things just a little bit. So we go back to our mask, select that, 
And then you could add a brush. You could just say, let's do another add brush. And with that, maybe about halfway flow, start brushing in those other areas. So this is just where you would touch up some of this if you needed to. Over here, blending in some of this table, you know, it's the same problem that you have to some degree when you are using even exposure blending with the various exposures to do it. You're gonna have some type of like odd uh, little jaggedy edges or something else around some type of a boundary that you select one way or the other. So this isn't too bad. You can see I got a little bit too much here. I could go back, use like my subtract brush if I wanted to, which was uh, this brush right here. And I could subtract off of that area. So if I needed to, so that's, that's fine. But either way that we want to do it, it's now looking like a pretty well exposed image. You can blend this as much as you want with these brushes. It'll do a lot better than using a luminosity range. And once again, if we go in to 100% on this and look at the pixels, we're not really seeing noise because we're using basically an ISO invariant camera and just basically a modern camera. So anyways, comparing this then to the manual blended one, you can see it actually probably is a little bit better, maybe a little bit brighter. Yeah, there's some areas and spots I missed here. So a little bit of touch up on that. And when this was all done, it looked like this. So these are three techniques that you can try. Try it with your camera by going out and taking a picture of a shadowed building, a shadowed house, exposing for the sky. See how well your camera works in these various situations. You might be surprised using ISO 100, even ISO 200, how far you can push it while you're shooting in RAW or taking your RAWs and converting those into 16-bit TIFFs. Remember, Always use an exposure that is exposing for the sky. Don't try to expose for the ground and then lower the sky because you won't get the same results. Also then make sure that your camera is capable of doing this by testing it out first. And then using one of these three techniques, you can get a variety of things by just using the add and subtract brushes. Word of warning though, if you are gonna be shooting for a commercial company, a remodel company, maybe a builder, they probably will want a history and you're gonna have more flexibility if you use Photoshop and using the manual blending technique that I showed in a prior video. But in the meantime, these three techniques should help you with a lot of your real estate listing shoots.